We're finishing up Romans tonight. One last, one last, uh, one last chapter. How about that? It took. It's taken a while. I think it's 17 weeks that we've gone. 17 or 18. Um, real quickly, I'll do a the quick overview of the main theme of Romans is God wants to impute his righteousness to you as a free gift through Jesus Christ. That's the whole thing. That's the whole umbrella, if you want to put it in a nutshell. God wants to impute his righteousness to you through Jesus Christ. Quick outline. Remember, there's four sections. Last time you'll hear it, I promise. The wrath of God is the first section. Second section is the grace of God. Thank God for the grace of God. Amen. Third section is the plan of God. And we're still in the last section, which is the will of God. And it's so fitting that we end tonight this way. Because it's right immediately following this, we're going to have the annual business report. I I encourage everyone to stay and listen to it and hear what God's done. But this whole last, this, God's timing never ceases to amaze me because this last chapter, it's easy to breeze through because what it is, is Paul is giving thanks to every person that helped him in the ministry. And it's, isn't that great to see that, that it falls on the annual business meeting? Because when you hear everything that's happened in this church this year, it's not just me, it's not just Jen, it took a body, the body of Christ coming together to make everything happen. Isn't it great? It's like Cherie testified about and, and Mela about going up to Redbird Mission and they, they took all the things. This church has been so generous this year. You should he, when you, wait till you hear all the things. And that's exactly what happens here. There's 28 people that Paul refers to, 26 are named, but 28 that he refers to in this chapter. And different occupations, different education levels, different places from for, that they, they were in society. And, and that, that's kind of like us as a church. If you walked around and, and interviewed every person in this church, we've got some amazing uh, testimonies. I mean, just amazing testimonies that will blow you away. And ministry was never meant to be done alone. Right? Ministry was never meant to be done alone. This is one of the biggest areas in my life that I had to grow, and I'm still growing in. If you want to pray for something for your pastor, pray that I keep growing in this, because it will only grow um, as, as much as I release. I can become the ceiling in this church, and I don't want to be the ceiling. I want Jesus Christ to be the ceiling in the whole body of Christ. And it's so easy as men, you men, you'll understand this, that we can do this on our own. And it's not. We were never meant to do ministry alone. I love that. And uh, so because of all the names that are listed in this chapter, and it'll help save time a little bit, okay, I'm actually going to play it. So we got NLT back there and the names because you don't want to hear me try to make up some of these names. And, and, and I, w- I don't want to disgrace these people. Um, I could, trust me, I could make some names up if you wanted me to. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to butcher the name. So if you want to follow through, what we're going to do is we're, he's gonna, he, uh, Austin's going to play it, chapter uh, 27 verses. And then we'll go back and we'll make some comments. Does that sound good? All right. Go ahead, Austin. Chapter 16. Paul greets his friends. I commend to you our sister Phoebe who is a deacon in the church in Sancria. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many, and especially to me. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in the ministry of Christ Jesus. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. I am thankful to them, and so are all the Gentile churches. Also give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. Greet my dear friend Epinidus. He was the first person from the province of Asia to become a follower of Christ. Give my greetings to Mary, who has worked so hard for your benefit. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews, who were in prison with me. They are highly respected among the apostles and became followers of Christ before I did. 
Greet Ampliatus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ. And my dear friend, Stachus. Greet Apelles, a good man whom Christ approves. And give my greetings to the believers from the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet the Lord's people from the household of Narcissus. Give my greetings to Tryphena and Tryphosa, the Lord's workers, and to dear Persis, who has worked so hard for the Lord. Greet Rufus, whom the Lord picked out to be his very own, and also his dear mother, who has been a mother to me. Give my greetings to Asynchronous, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who meet with them. Give my greetings to Philoogus, Julia, Nerus, and his sister, and to Olympus and all the believers who meet with them. Greet each other in Christian love. All the churches of Christ send you their greetings. Paul's Final Instructions And now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from them. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They are serving their own personal interests. By smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people. But everyone knows that you are obedient to the Lord. This makes me very happy. I want you to be wise in doing right and to stay innocent of any wrong. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, sends you his greetings, as do Lucius, Jason, and Sassipater, my fellow Jews. I, Tertius, the one writing this letter for Paul, send my greetings too, as one of the Lord's followers. Gaius says hello to you. He is my host and also serves as host to the whole church. Erastus, the city treasurer, sends you his greetings, and so does our brother Quartus. Now all glory to God, who is able to make you strong, just as my good news says. This message about Jesus Christ has revealed his plan for you Gentiles, a plan kept secret from the beginning of time. But now as the prophets foretold, and as the eternal God has commanded, this message is made known to all Gentiles everywhere, so that they too might believe and obey him. All glory to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Isn't that good? Aren't you thankful I didn't read that? <clears throat> you should be. <laughs> that way it would have been twice as long and butchered names. But so I, I wanted to go through. I did read it several times and I studied it and I found some of the names and, and so I will dig out a few things that history says. Some of the things we, we just we're going from what history and what other writers have said, Joe Cephas and different people like that. Um, that record about these people, uh, but 20, 28 people that he refers to. There was a lot of people that helped Paul. Isn't that great? The first one that he comes to is Phoebe. Um, it's a woman, and and think about this. This is really really big, because you got to remember the setting. Remember I talked about hermeneutics, how to tear something apart and how to study the word. 2,000 years ago, think about it, 2,000 years ago, in a male-dominant society, they didn't have women's rights like in America right now, okay? A male-dominant society, a society that literally puts women down. A Jewish rabbi named Paul gives thanks and accolades first to a woman. Isn't that good? So to all those people that say that Paul put women down, it's hogwash, right? He really, he had, he had a great respect for women. He really did. Um, people have accused Paul of saying that women, that they don't have no place in ministry. That's not true. The very first person that he gives thanks for is Phoebe. And I, I wrote this, uh, or I didn't write this, but I, 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 I went back to, to see what the word says. Phoebe, who is a deacon in the church of Cicer, uh, Centuria. See? Centuria. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many and especially me. Isn't that good? I tell you what, this church wouldn't be half as good without the women. We have, we have a great prayer team. We do. 
and they're most the, the prayer team is made up mostly of a lot of women that that lead the charge my wife jennifer i'm telling you trust me she 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 even dresses me so think about that you know if i look good it's because of jennifer and so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be half as good i promise you and nine out of the 26 names listed here are women. Think about that. And so God, God, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's good to give honor where honors due. And so, and the next person that I, I'd just like to see is Priscilla and Aquila. If you remember the time that we were in Acts, in the book of Acts, Priscilla and Aquila were mentioned there. And uh, in the temple, if, the, if we were in Jewish times and, and we came into the temple there, the men would all sit on one side, and the women would sit all on the other side, right? And it's kind of like a Mennonite church that way. But even more than that, which you might not have known, I didn't know until I studied it out, but they would sit according a lot of times to their occupation and their trade. Think about that. And so Priscilla and Aquila were tent makers. What was Paul? A tent maker. So they probably found themselves sitting together in church first and became acquaintances, then they became really good friends. Isn't that cool? And they became lifelong friends. And, um, they, and the, the Bible says in this passage, it says that they risked their life for Paul. That's some pretty good friends right there, isn't it? They risked their life. And they had a home church. They started a church in their home. It's, it's really encouraging because, you know, we're starting roundups where people are going to meet in homes. And, and it, it's, it's good because what happened was persecution hit. They didn't have churches like we have. They weren't like a green county. Green county, I think we had 285 churches in this county. So you just couldn't go down the street to a church. There was persecution that hit, so they went underground, and they would meet in each other's houses. For 200 years, the church met in houses more than anything. Think about that. I tell you what, this, this reminds me of, of, of what we're doing here. We're meeting in homes. We're going to start meeting in homes. That's what the Roundup Groups is about. That there's going to be, there's six of them starting out this session that, and, and actually there's more than that. If you consider that Brenda does a coffee thing, that's a little Roundup, if you ask me, that's what it is. And, and there's this little groups that, that meet, but it's okay. You know, if, if, if this is your, their, your image of what church is just here and just the body of Christ, it's too small. We should take it out into the, to the highways and byways and, and preach the gospel. He said go into all the world. He didn't say go into all the church. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. It's good. And think about this. If persecution were ever to hit again in America, we'd already be ready to go. Think about it, right? I, I, I often wonder if persecution really hit how many true Christians we'd have in America. If it really cost you something to serve the Lord, what would it look like? Amen? I thought about, you know, when we first started the church in the barn, we had, I had one guy come from Nashville to visit, and he reconnected with the Holy Spirit. It was Chad. Everybody knows Chad. And he said he had to go back to Nashville, and he said, look, if you'll live stream, he said, I'll pay for the Internet. And so I said, don't worry about that. We'll put a cell phone on a pole. And so we did. We taped a cell phone to a pole, and we live streamed the, churches in the, uh, the church and the barn. And that's how we started. And it grew from there, and we got a tech team, and it kept going and growing. And, and you know what? When COVID hit, we were way ahead of the game. We were. There were other churches that were trying to figure out how to live stream. We had been doing it for years. And people, it, it, we didn't skip a beat. It was amazing. We grew through that time. And just think about that. If we start home groups and you got home groups and if persecution ever were to hit, I hope it doesn't. But if it does, we'd be ahead of the game. Amen. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> so the next name I wanted to go through, we ain't got time to go through all the names but Urbanus, um, Urbanus, when I, what I could find out about that, it was a common name for a slave. And it was literally um, a, a city-bred slave, a common name for a city-bred slave. 
urban, urbanus, urbanus. How about that? In the same sentence, in the same line, there's another name called Stachius. And the only records we have of Stachius is mentioned that he was a, a man from the house of Caesar. Isn't that cool? So in, one, in the same line, you have a slave, and then you have somebody from the house of, of Caesar. Paul did that on purpose. He was saying from the, rich to the, from the poor to the rich, from the slave to the free. Isn't that good? There's a, there's a meaning. I, you know, Holy, the Holy Spirit directed Paul's words, and he was writing to a people that would understand exactly who these people were. And so it made an impact on them. And uh, then you have um, Arda, Ardo Bullis. Arlo Bullis? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably butchering it. You know, I did practice how to say them, but it just slips my mind, okay? But he was the, great, he was the grandson of Herod Agrippa I, the great-grandson of Herod the Great. Isn't that cool? He got saved. He accepted Christ, and he's part of these people. And then you got Herodian, who is probably someone from the line of Herod. And then you have Narcissus, who is, uh, history records as he was a, a wealthy bad fellow. <laughs> I wrote that down, a wealthy bad fellow. He was the secretary to Emperor Claudius. Isn't that cool? And he repented and became a follower of Christ. So you've got such a great mixture. Paul was thanking all these people that helped him in ministry. In the letter to the, the, to the Philippians, you remember Paul writes, he says, I greet you and members from the royal household greet you. Remember that in Philippians? If you read Philippians, you'll see it in there. He says, I send my greetings and members from the royal household so I believe while Paul was incarcerated, people would come from the royal household, household to come hear him preach. They got converted and helped him in ministry. Isn't that awesome? It's so good. And so I, I, as I was thinking about this, Paul rubbed shoulders and his ministry was supported and, and they came together by a mix of all kind of people. There was women, there was men, there were slaves, there were royalty. There were ex-bad guys. There were scribes. There was a town treasurer. And, that, and that, remember it says in there, it was a town treasurer. There was fellow inmates. Isn't that cool? And then he has Timothy, his adopted sons in there that he comes so close to. And so I, I love how ministry is not meant to be cookie cutter Christians. Everybody here has a testimony. I've heard some amazing testimonies, some different backgrounds and how God saved you. He might have saved you from the pit. He might have saved you from the palace. Isn't it so good? But if you're one in Jesus and we come together and we love each other and we give thanks for each other, we can do an amazing things. Amen. But Paul goes on then to say, um, he, he makes one more appeal. Remember that he says, I'm going to make one more appeal to all of you. Watch out for people who try to cause division among you. To me, there's no coincidence that he lists all this diversity of people, and then he says, I'm going to make one more appeal, and watch out for people who try to come in and try to divide the body. We are the body of Christ. You've got to learn to love your brother and sister whether you like it or not, whether they look like you or not, whether they act like you or not, whether their education level was like you or not, whether their occupation is like you or not. As long as we believe in Jesus and we love Jesus, right? Isn't that good? It don't matter how much money you make or how little money you make. We've got to learn to love. And he says, you know how you deal with those people that try to cause division, those people that kind of come in and try to, try to cause drama and arguments over stupid stuff? You know how you deal with them? He says, stay away from them. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Turn to somebody and say, stay away from them. <laughs> don't, don't send them a text. Don't Facebook a messenger. 
Don't do a TikTok to try to get back to Adam or anything or try to prove your point or try to argue with them. Don't enter into those things. If they're trying to cause drama and division, you know what? Just stay away from them. Take their platform away because people who love to cause division and drama and are always stirring it up, if you enter into argument and try to debate with them, they love nothing better because it gives them a platform. But if you ignore them and stay away from them, it takes their platform away and peace comes back. Isn't that good? Paul is, Paul is, Paul is just amazing, led by the Holy Spirit. Stay away. Ignore them. There's a, in verse 22, he says, I, Tarsius, or Tarsius, the one writing this letter from Paul, sends my greetings to you too as one of the Lord's followers. You realize Paul didn't even pen this letter. He had somebody pen the letter for him. I don't know if, if it was Paul's eyes because in some places they said that Paul had problems with his eyes or he could have had shaky hands or maybe he just needed help. Maybe it was a time that he went through persecution and his body was beat. But he needed somebody to write this letter for him. We all need somebody. Ministry was never meant to go alone. Amen? So, uh, one last thought before we close. Paul said, he begins the letter with, remember, we, we memorized some scriptures in the beginning. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power. Remember that? That's, that's Romans 1.16. And so, he ends the letter giving glory to God. Glory to God, who is the power to establish you. The New Living says it this way, Now all glory to God, it's verse 25, Now all glory to God who is able to make you strong, just as my good news says. And then the New King James says it this way, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel in the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery kept since the world began. I love that, don't you? It's the power of God. The power of God, the gospel, is the power to save. The power of the gospel is the power to sanctify. Amen? Sanctify, that's an old word, but that's where you get, you get the things, the weights out of your life, the sin that holds you back, sanctify you, can save you, sanctify you, and the last part is to establish you. Isn't that great? The power of the gospel will establish you. I love that, don't you? Amen. Turn to somebody and say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Does anybody have a comment? I knew that was uh, uh, pretty quick, but there was. Uh, I'm so thankful for all those people that helped Paul. Aren't you? Amen. Anybody have a comment? We finished Romans. Yes. Pastor Tim Goss here. Thank you so much for joining us at, at Crossroads Cowboy Church for service. I hope the Lord touched your heart. I know that he's, he, is, he is here and he's leading us and guiding us. And maybe you were watching and the Holy Spirit really pulled on your heart. and You never gave your heart to Christ or maybe you just want to recommit your life to Christ. Well, it's as easy as asking him. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I need, I repent of my sins. I need a Savior. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you came and you died for me and for my sins that I couldn't pay for. And uh, the Bible says if you believe in your heart and conf or confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that salvation shall come to you. And so if you did that, just then just start at living for him. Just ask him, Holy Spirit, show me, lead me and guide me. So excited for you if you did that. If, uh, if you would like to, to like and subscribe our channel, we would love to be able to share with others, maybe your friends. If you know somebody that doesn't know Jesus or, or they just need an encouraging word, um, just make sure you like and subscribe and share it with them. It's the easiest way you can do it. So thankful again that you are uh, joining us. Hope to see you again next time. God bless you.